welcome back to X3. Today we're going to be taking a look at what you need to do once you have at least a few hundred thousand credits if you've been following the previous videos and sort of a similar sort of startup that you might do with X4. So in X3, unfortunately, you're not going to be doing all that mining. Instead, well, we're going to be doing trading and probably missions, at least to get started. And of course, you can start the, the sort of main story missions whenever you like. Uh, we did cover that thing in the previous episode. You did get a message about that. You can see this flashing indicator down here. I'll come on to this in a second. So if you, like me, have a couple of Mercuries or a couple of whatever area you've started in, uh, you'll see I've got them both heading to sort of home, if you like. Solar power plant and an ore mine. And I've renamed them just by pressing M. You can just rename them really quickly, unlike X4. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> renaming them is perfectly straightforward. And uh, yeah, the, the problem you're going to have, and we were using Remote Best Buy and Remote Best Sell, is that they are slow. Though, so, yep, yeah. yeah, thank you, Home of Light. Um, they're very, very slow. And because they're slow, it means you're going to get these flashing messages. This is going to say, basically, there you go. Ammunition factory, Home of Light would only take some of the ore. Still have 21 units left. Fine. Uh, sorry, something like that someone got here first. The price here is not as good as I was expecting for energy cells. So basically, when you started the order up, they had an expectation of what they were going to sell for. When they got there, the price was different. And that means they're not going to sell because you could end up making a loss if they just actually sold and the price had gone way, way, way down on what you were expecting. So that's sort of best buys and best sells. And unfortunately, because that's a semi-manual process, you have to start them off doing that. Um, that also means that you are going to have to manage dealing with them when they when they run out. <laughs> Their offer changes. I pray they do not change it further or something. Regardless, um, you can then improve even further on that. Now, let me just slow myself down to zero for a second. Um, other than pressing the screenshot key. Um, you can improve that still further. So if you have a look at here on the uh, home, of, is that home of light? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Th thank you. Go away, please. Do you have to actually do that every time? Oh, you do. Oh, one second. 30 seconds later, after talking, um, <laughs> Home of Light is a very good station. And it has a few things. We, we saw buying best buys and best sell locators. That's what we used previously. They're very, very cheap. But we then have Trade Command Software Mark III, and that's half a million. Now, for your half a million credits, you get something that's a lot, lot better. You get something called sector trading, local trading, and universe trading. The only difference between those three is essentially the level of your pilot. So they'll always start at sector trading, then they'll be able to move... Uh, well, after a certain level, you can re reassign them and then set them to local. And after another level, you can reassign them and set them to universe. The difference there is that sector traders will only trade in one sector. Makes sense. Uh, local traders, I think it's called local traders, I think it's after level 6 that your pilot gets to, um, you can assign a jump range, and I think as the, uh, I think maybe as the pilot gets further up in level, you can set the actual uh, jump range. Regardless, you're going to set a range for which they're going to trade, and that's almost back to where we are right now, but right now we're doing it semi-manually, whereas they'll just do it automatically, and they won't just buy and trade ore, or energy cells, they'll look for the best buys and best sells themselves, and they'll go and figure it out. And then there's universe traders where they'll go anywhere. Okay, they're all over the actual uh, X universe. They'll just go and find stuff and make you money. All three of those are entirely automated once you set them up. You set them up once per ship and away they go. You don't have to switch them again. They'll continue leveling up. Well, I say you don't have to switch them again. Every time they pass the threshold of moving from sector like level six to level seven, you, or level five to level six, I can never remember what the exact threshold is you'll be able to reset up the same order, but in this case, you'll have extra options. So it's just like an X4 when you can right click on the ship, go to behaviors, and the other options are grayed out. Exactly the same thing in X3. So trade command software, Mark III, but you can have a look, it's 500,000 credits. Now, right now I don't have 500,000 credits. I've got 221,000 credits. Fair enough, easy enough for me to get the actual credits now that I have uh, three ships. I can go and do more missions, or indeed get more trading done. Bit grindy to do the trading, but it is certainly easy enough to do. However, um, what you probably want to do with that, if we have a look at our ships, they don't have any defences. Remember I bought them used? Well, buying them used sort of has a downside in the, 
<laughs> whatever they have and you can go and try and equip them with stuff so for example if i press u on this um they're gonna start talking but if you have a look down uh where is it it's in here somewhere yeah shield bay nothing nada it has no shields whatsoever if i go here on this one and press u it has one uh mega jewel of shields so that's the minimum possible uh you can however buy them with that increase number of shields now i didn't mention this previously that uh, you could do that if we just go to the next system up, Argon Prime, and then go down to the shipyard and then trade. You can see down here we have the medium. We don't, there's no stock of the large, but the medium, if we just go into information on that, is three five megajoule shields. So it's 15 times the amount of defenses, if you like, that uh, my current ship, maximum ship, has. Now, that it does have a bit more of a credit impact in, in terms of initially buying it, but remember, you're going to be loading that thing with 500,000 credits worth of software, plus whatever other software you have. So it's going to be worth near enough a million. You probably don't want it to actually get, um, well, pirated. Because the pirates, they will destroy your ship. So if you're going to move on to uh, sector traders, you're going to need that piece of software. And you're probably going to want some kind of defenses. You may even want to put turrets on the, on your uh, on your, your trading ship, whatever it is, to keep that, that ship alive as it actually tracks all over the place. Because it will just learn as it goes. Now, because we don't have huge amounts, millions and millions of credit yet... There is a cheaper alternative, which I've never really tried early game before, but I thought it would be worth trying. You can see I've sent my both my ships to Terracorp HQ right here, and uh, one's already there, so we may as well get that uh, going. So I'm going to press D for trade. I'm going to get to buy commo commodity, oh, commodity logistics software Mark II. There's Mark I and Mark II. Buy Mark II. I don't think I've ever had an opportunity to just buy Mark I, and we're just going to install that. So that enables a whole bunch of other uh, other stuff that we can actually do with it. So let me first of all install the other one. In fact, what I'm going to do now, we've installed it on this one. So now I'm going to tell it to go navigate to... Uh, in fact, I'm just going to tell it to fly south one into ore belt. Because ore belt's where the ore is and that's the ore particular trader. And then we're going to be able to do a new command when we communicate with it. We're going to be able to set it to start external commodity logistics. Sounds like an overly technical term. Basically, it lets you set up relationships in uh, or waypoints for that ship to go to and go and do something at that waypoint. For example, you could get it to go, in this case, what we're going to try and do is get to go to an ore mine, pick up some ore if it's a certain price, and then take it to other places in the same system and try and sell it if it's a certain price. But because that's entirely automat automated once you set it up, it's sort of like a cheap version, hopefully, of sector traders, which will save us a fair bit more money at the start of the game. Let me get that sort of sorted and I'll bring you back in a minute once I've got the other ship docked and got upgraded as well. I should mention also one other piece of software you're going to need and then you need to send to an equipment dock to get in. We're just going to get that now is navigation command software one. Very, very cheap again. It's like three grand, so um, it'll be extremely straightforward for you to pick that up, no doubt and uh, then just send them wherever you want to start this up. Okay, both pieces of software installed. Next part's very, very important. Um, <laughs> if anything like me, you've, you've got to panic if you try this. If you try and give them a CLS, Commodity Logistics Software, I'm just going to call it CS, CLS from now on, it's much easier to say, or the other option we're going to go into, um, you'll find they're all grayed out, but they, they won't work until you've got the ships docked in a station because you need a special kind of pilot for this to occur on, and that pilot can only board your ship when they're in a station, as far as the in-game, because the roleplay is concerned. So go and get them docked in the sector you want to start them in, and just get them docked in, in any station. Uh, just the station you're going to be buying stuff from is, is perfectly fine. And once you start them up, however, you won't need to keep them docked in a station from that point onwards. It's just the first time you set the ship up, you need them in a station after buying these software. Got it? Okay, now there are two options here. One is the CLS option, the external commodity logistics option, which I'm going to show you in a second. The other one is economy and sector trader or system trader or something like that, but it's called economy trader. Um, we're going to set them both up and we're going to see how they do over time. People in the comments, you can give your actual views as I'm not sure if external commodity logistics is going to do exactly what I want, uh, but we'll see. Uh, so I've got one in this all man. In fact, they're both docked now. 
So let's set them up. So if I communicate with them and go to trade option, press two, you'll see there's two options down at the bottom and they only appear when you have that um, CLS software installed. Now, this bottom one, if it's greyed out for you, it probably means you don't have enough of a reputation yet. Now, you require a reputation of trader or above and that's really easy to get. If you do a few trades, you'll get that kind of trader reputation really quite easily. If you've been following along, you'll already have it, it's fine. So the or one, I'm gonna to set to this economy and supply trader, that's what we call not sector trader, that's the other thing. Uh, so economy and supply trader, okay. So we see we've got a new menu with all kinds of different options for this. So uh, for example, where lists, uh, I guess I can uh, choose to actually, um, hmm, can I actually add a where? Yes, I can, I'm gonna choose do I want to add you a wear list? Um, I would, well, it's, uh, yeah, minerals, I guess, is what we're going to choose. I'm going to choose ore. There we go. And wear list is ore. Uh, I'm not going to bother with anything else. Uh, in fact, I wanted to add minerals or ore. Add wear. Okay, I hope I actually did that. We'll see in a second. Anyway, we're going to add ore. I'm going to tell it to basically um, start trying to supply ore within its current area. Now, it may well also be able to jump, uh, not well, not jump with a jump drive, but travel one sector away from its current area. So I'm also going to set its home base to uh, ore belt and we'll leave it there once I get this set up in a second. And uh, in fact, you see it says starting set to ore belt there and you can just press start and everything should go. There are lots of different settings you can tune in here to get it to do different things. Um, things like taking trainings, give it a salary. Right now, it's probably like level one, so it's always an apprentice or whatever it is, so it doesn't actually need a salary or anything. And uh, yeah, you can do all kinds of other things. Uh, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to get it started, and we'll see what it actually does. Command accepted. Well, it says accepted. EST on standby, it says. And I'm just going to make sure I got that ore into the actual list. I can't remember what it actually uh, fed in properly. So I'm going to put that in there and we'll see how that does. And then we'll show you setting up the other thing, uh, the committee uh, CLS option uh, in just one second once I've verified this is working the way I expect. And I did miss adding the, the ore to the... Um yeah, to the list. I'll show you that in a second. It's not quite obvious when you're supposed to press escape to get out. However, in the uh, trading conditions menu, you can choose what amount of profit you want and what uh, the other, well, the profit is obviously how much it will sell for versus what it bought for. But this is the important one here as well. Maximum product stock at target station. So basically that determines w what point it's going to try and start to sell. Remember, depending on the amount of stock at a station, depends on how much it's going to actually sell it for if it's producing stuff or how much it's going to buy it for if it um if it's going to consume stuff so yeah you do actually want to make sure i'm just going to leave them on default for now and we'll see how well they actually do um and uh is that anything that i'm not going to do uh i didn't actually change anything here so oh in fact yes i did uh, i just changed trade range home sector to one except the changes and in where lists yeah this is where we need to make sure you see it says one entry uh the point you need to stop at is if you go to where list and then when it gets to this screen, which just shows where list, you don't go and then press enter again, because then that means you need to add the where back in. So minerals and or, and then that's it in there. Stop there. Okay. When it levels up, you can add more wares to it, but by default, it can only do one. One entry and start. And it's going to sit there until it figures out um, that basically it's got a deal to go and do. So that's going to leave it alone. Now, the other one is uh, where we get into CLS stuff. So for this one, instead, what I'm going to do is communicate with it. And now we're going to go to um, community, community Logistics, CLS. And very similar set of menus here. However, uh, what we can do is set waypoints. So you can see uh, if we add a station and we're in power circle anyway, so we can say, for example, uh, you can only set four waypoints by default because it's a, it's not trained yet. It's a very immature, inexperienced pilot. So if we just set a couple of the solar power plants, like this one and this one, and then we can set a couple of the mines or something like that, and we can set a second ship to do the other sets of stuff, then you know, you'll know you have your four waypoints uh, in no time. So we'll just take, take them alphabetically. So we'll just take L beta, and uh, we're going to buy 
uh, energy cells and we want to make sure they are manual price setting so we want to buy at um i don't know maybe maybe 13 maybe 13 or 14 maybe okay um or manual input up to uh maximum cargo space is fine because we've only got we've only got one good so buying 300 energy credits uh, sorry energy cells for 14 credits each that's fine and we're going to add another station here again so same and then i'm going to basically do uh buy uh, energy cells manual price setting and then 14 or 13 14 yeah we'll just keep it the same thing and maximum cargo space is fine you'll see it's got two waypoints now that's all it's doing it's literally going exactly what you're telling it to and uh trying to trying to sell stuff so then we can add a station for um i'm sure the silica oh in fact we probably need to we probably need to go and check a couple of things uh hopefully that will save all my stuff uh if i just go up here just make sure they consume energy credits so let's take a look at the silicon mines uh what silicon do you use mine. you do in fact use energy credits and the ore mine probably uses them as well as does the cattle ranch yeah so everything uses them we're pretty safe to do that so in here we're going to go into the energy cells again communicate trade uh cls and waypoints yeah they're still in here good 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 and um, you don't necessarily have to use ships, by the way. Yeah, you can, uh, the, the stations, you can use ships. So you can use this to, to basically do things like feed your fleet with energy cells. You can have, um, I forget what they call it in military terms. It's basically a supply ship or a supply wagon or something that follows along behind your main fleet. And you go back and go and fill up with ammunition. There is a word for it. Someone in the comments could probably say, I can never remember the name of it. But it is that kind of ship. It's a it's a cargo holding ship for for your main fleet. Regardless, um, where was I? Yes. So let's just go for the silicon mines for this one. So the silicon mines. Uh, this is going to try and sell them now. Energy credits, and uh, I want to sell. Well, I'd like to sell at maximum, but manual price setting. I'd, I'm happy selling at maybe eighteen. Let's say, okay, and maximum cargo space. Same thing. Add a station. And then the other silicon mine, sell, energy cells, uh, manual price setting, 18, and maximum cargo space. Now that's all the waypoints I can do, and go. All right. Now, technically, they are both now automatic, except that the second one, you've set specific stations to go to to try and buy stuff, specific stations to go to try and sell stuff, and it's just going to wait until it can actually do so. The other one is basically entirely automatic once you settle, hey, go buy all for me and make at least 10% profit, please. And that's it. You just sort of leave it alone and step back. Both of those should work, I hope. <laughs> but we'll see over time. So I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to go and do some other stuff and we'll see if it actually generates any money. If you want to know what your money's like, uh, just go into your player menu. Go down to advanced and then down to graphs and you'll be able to choose money in here and you'll be able to see uh how much money you're making over time i think this is hours played so uh in this case remember hours gets accelerated by CETA, so this is not i've not been in game for 18 hours but i have had CETA running and this this drop just now is me buying those pieces of software not very much a drop mind you but what we're looking to see is that continuing trend upwards and obviously uh, we'd like it to be nice and exponential as we actually get more and more stuff However, so that's two different options for you to make money automatically with ships that you don't need to then do the manual best buy, best sell, best buy. And you don't need to pay 500,000 credits for the privilege of starting them up into a completely automated one. However, maybe we should actually get another ship, start that into Trade Command Mark III and get it to, well, probably in a different, uh, in a different system, um, get it to just compete with these other two and we'll see how much they make. Um, so example systems you might want to explore for if you want to do that is heading down or sort of left here from home of light down to emperor mines something like that and uh, in there you'll find a bunch of ore mines just like in uh, where we currently are and then there is more down south from paranoid prime as well that you can actually go and find a decent system i think it's called is it emperor's edge or something like that there's a decent system down there anyway but you just have to work your way around and that's a good system to start uh, sector trading in. 
Uh, there's of course a couple of other ones as well, like the wall. Uh, that's a huge system, and uh, in fact, no, not the wall. The hole is a huge system. The wall's not too bad. This again is cattle ranches, wheat farms, and solar power plants. Um, they are interact as well, and there's there's a few more sectors we can actually go to and uh, get that started. But for now, we've got a couple of things set up. We can leave them alone and go and maybe hunt down some more missions, which is where I come onto my player ship. So we've have got our ship right now, uh, which is the Discoverer. It does not have a jump drive, but a jump drive only costs 100 grand. So I need a jump drive and I need some energy credits and then I can take missions that are a bit more profitable and uh, probably a lot easier for them to manage. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time off camera waiting for these ships to kick on and see whether they actually start up and do anything, um, at which point I should be able to then go and afford the jump drive just to make sure I have maybe 300 grand before I actually spend 100 grand. So I've got always got an amount of money, like 200 grand spare, just in case I need to do things. So you need the jump drive, you need some energy credits, and then, for example, the missions that say, I want you to take me somewhere and it needs to be within 12 minutes, but it's like four systems away or something. If you've got a jump drive with enough energy cells and there's enough storage space to hold them to jump you that far, you can get those missions and it'll look quite a bit more money than when we have been so far. Those missions can be very, very lucrative if, if you upgrade your player ship and you have a jump drive on it. We can move these this piece of equipment between uh, ships as well, so don't worry, it's not lost amounts if you actually buy it. So I'm off to make a little bit more money and I'll see you, well, in a few seconds for you in, in a bit more time for me. Quick update, they are both working. The only thing I will say about CLS is uh, I did have to change one setting to make them actually do something, which is to go into uh, so into trade menu, into the CLS, uh, go into supply settings or supply conditions, and you see where these both says minimum transfer amount on collection and delivery, change those to zero, they're set to 5% by default, and as soon as I did that, it started to kicking in and it went and bought 3000 credits and it's now just waiting till it can actually sell them. And in the other one, you can see that right now, it's deciding to go and dock at a free Argon trading station. Uh, why? I don't know, but presumably it's going to make some money for me. That'd be nice. Okay, so it looks like a mission we've just received. This is to going to sell us an express and you can see the prices here for it, uh, 400 grand. It's pretty good. Um, and that would be really good to actually take. So I think what I'm going to do is do that. Uh, I need to go into my current system. Uh, it's in one of these. Let's just take a look. Uh, are you? No, not, not radioactive waste. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully the mission is still available. There we go. 65% and then we get it for 86 grand. Now remember, um, that 400 grand is not what you're actually going to get. It's going to be 30% less than that if it was a brand new ship, pretty much. And 30% less than that, even if I remember rightly, if it's damaged and all kinds of other stuff. So it's going to be less than 400 grand, but even so, it should be fairly profitable on 86 grand. So I'm going to take that and uh, I will take Ship that. Computer control transferred. Yes, and where's my ship? Uh, it's in Kahuna Bakery L. So I'm going to just tell it to go and orders. Um, yep, navigate. Why don't you just uh, follow me? Command accepted. Okay, so it should leave the system, uh, station I should say, somewhere in here. Yeah, there it is. Express, and then what I'm probably going to tell it to just to, just to like stop. Uh, stand by. Command accepted. Okay, and then we'll go and approach it rather than it approaching us, because it, it's, it's, it's basically a haul. It's going to be terribly slow. And as normal, uh, what I'm going to do is go over and um, repair it using my little repair laser and see if I can actually earn a bit of money. Okay, so while both ships are doing a bit of activity, they're not doing as much as I like. So I'm going to make sure I train the pilots. Now, we're not going to train the pilots that are on those ships because they'll occasionally sell stuff. They're not going to be great money makers until they get higher, higher levels. So we're going to force that to happen. I'll show you how in a second. But first of all, we're going to sell this express. It's at a shipyard. So I'm going to go into trade and press left arrow. And uh, well, I've got a lot more money now. I'm at 329,000, I was on the 80,000 or so, so I pretty much tripled my money from the 86,000 I paid, and we got 330 grand. So that's a pretty good pretty good thing to do. You can keep that ship as well. The Express is a, a transport ship for personnel, so you, uh, sorry, passenger, so you can transport the people around for that type of mission if you want to. I don't want to, but you can choose that to do that if you would like. So we've got these two ships, uh, we're going to ignore those. 
We're just going to go to, and I've just been exploring its Empire's Edge I was thinking of uh, earlier. Um, we're going to go into Argon Prime, go to the shipyard, I'm going to trade with the ship, and I'm going to buy a, a few Discoverers if they're available. Uh, discoverers, yeah, well, let me just, let me just buy one. Uh, or maybe two. Yeah, so let's just buy two. Ship ordered at shipyard. Uh, install ships extensions. Um, I can actually get that now rather than doing it later. So commodity logistics software mark two. I'm going to install. Uh, duplex scanner is optional, but I'll install them, I guess. And uh, navigation command software. Navigation command installed. Okay, and I don't really need anything else to be honest, but we can probably get them to fly faster just with the uh, engine tuning. Uh, do I actually want to spend that much on it? Probably not. And rudder optimization, maybe a little bit on that as well. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so I spent half my money on a couple of tiny ships, which seems like an awful thing to do. Uh, however, uh, I'll just get back to my property. So I've got two discoverers. I'm just going to change the name. I'm just going to say uh, Trainer 1. We will have more than two of these. Uh, I do promise. So, and then Trainer 2. So M, Trainer 2. Okay, Trainer 2. Now what we're going to do is sort of set them onto a sort of route that they can run without really doing anything apart from flying. And that's going to earn them experience that they're going to trade. Uh, basically... Uh, they're going to skill up. And just like in X4, uh, you you skill up by doing stuff in space. These are just going to actually be flight sort of stuff. So trade, uh, start log external commodity logistics. You can see I've only got one option on trade. And now we're going to set up a route that we're going to reuse on the other ship. To reuse it, we can save the data into a file. So first of all, I'm going to set up some waypoints. I'm going to add some uh, sort of places they want to go. So I'm just going to create a really big loop. Um, where are we going to go? We're going to go there. Um, I don't really need to do, so just fly to station is fine. And then at a station, I'm going to go across, uh, down over here somewhere. Doesn't really much matter where, but again, I'm just going to, uh, free Argon trading station, fly to station. That's perfectly fine. And then go all the way up to Antigone. Same thing. Free Argon Trading Station, Flight Station, and then same thing again. Lastly, uh, Three Worlds, maybe. Flight Station. Okay. So it's got four waypoints. That's all we can add at the early, you know, early stages. So uh, all we're going to do now is go to Data Storage and say Save Data into the first slot and say um, Newbie Training Run. Okay, and now that's actually saved there, we can actually use that on other ships. And we're just going to say start. And you should see it's now uh, heading out to a free Argon trading station. And now we can go on to the second trainer and just go to trade, start, go to uh, where is it now? Um, data storage, load data, new training run, load data. Yeah, sorry. It's one, two, many, and press Command start. Accepted. Okay, so you don't have to set the waypoints anymore. Both of those are going to start running loops, and they should earn experience, which we can then uh, basically tr uh, trade the pilots by getting this ship and this ship onto the same station, and then you should have an option to switch the pilots out. But uh, we're not going to do that this episode. I'm going to leave it alone for now, and hopefully I get... Well, I will probably get uh, high-level pilots quite quickly with these two, uh, maybe I think the, gu the forum guides say something like around about 10 flight hours. And of course, we're going to see to that. So that's, that's going to be quite fast. And because they're in a discoverer and they have some shields, um, if, you know, you're probably going to have maybe six of these running and you can probably even hide them from your uh, property own screen at some point as well. So uh, I'm going to leave it there for now. If you've got any suggestions for other people wanting to earn money with automatic trading, I think I've covered most of the options I think you have, at least in the early game, before we get to stations, and that's probably going to be coming up next. First kind of stations are around about half a million credits. You're going to have to hire a ship to take the station out there. Uh, we're not going to talk about complexes, which are multiple stations in one giant basically the stations in x4 are complexes almost 
Um, you can have one thing in them, but they're, they're composed of lots of separate things. In X3, you can have just, for example, down you can see at the bottom left of my screen here, that's a solar power plant. You can just have one solar power plant if you like, and just have position that wherever you like. If you find a, a system that uses solar power, but there isn't one there already, go and put one down. Or in, it, you can do the same thing for producing ore. You can go and find a uh, decent ore. Uh, asteroid, you can scan using the mineral scanner that's already on this ship. Find one, plop down a uh, station on it, and uh, you have it producing ore for you, basically. But we'll get to that fairly, uh, fairly soon. For now, we set up uh, the CLS, we set up uh, Economy Trader, and we'll see which one of those actually, actually earns any money whatsoever, none so far. And then we'll also train up the pilots. And these two may be a bit slow to start off with, in which case you can always fall back to the best sells and best buys. Um, not going to go to sector traders and universe traders yet. That's something that um, I don't want to spend half a million credits on these sort of terrible ships. I just want them to earn me some money. Um, one of the ships I probably want to get to is the Drake as far as running... Uh, on the sector and universe traders and we'll have them with jump drive and other stuff like that but that's for when i have enough money to do so for now as always guys thanks a lot for watching x3 and we'll see you next episode for some more money making and possibly some stations depends on how well i do in between the two episodes again tips down below for everyone else if you're a familiar if you're a very experienced x3 player otherwise um you know i'm sure i'll cover some other things in the next episode uh, if you're not a subscriber already, you're welcome to, along with uh, clicking on the bell for notifications for more episodes of either X3 or X4. And also there is other playthroughs on the channel at the moment, things like Bono uh, Subnautica Below Zero and various other games that we get to as and when we get time. As always, guys, thanks for watching.